the topic is lossless propagation of sinusoidal voltages here we talk about a sinusoidal voltages in the form of electromagnetic wave that propagate on a transmission line and the propagation is lossless propagation sinusoidal waves on transmission lines are based upon the frequency domain analysis of the signal as you know that the signal can propagate more efficiently when it is in frequency domain as compared to the time domain so here we consider a spectrum of a signal that is a spectrum of the electromagnetic wave which can propagate more efficiently on a lossless transmission line here we consider a frequency dependent transmission line parameters which is in a frequency domain and after that we convert it into a time domain so the objective is to understanding of sinusoidal propagation and the implementation of signal behavior for lossless line for this we consider a voltage wave equation for lossless transmission that is del square v upon del z square equals to lc del square v upon del t square this is obtained by putting r equals to g equals to 0 here r is called a series resistance and g is called a shunt conductance of the transmission line which is responsible for power losses so for lossless transmission we put r equals to g equals to 0 and we get a voltage wave equation that is del square v upon del z square now we know that there is a expected solution of this second order equation and this expected solution has two functions f1 and f2 here f1 is called a forward component of the wave equation and the f2 is called a backward component of the wave equation here in case of f1 function there is a argument that is t minus z upon u and in case of function f2 there is a argument t plus z upon u so this expected solution is a voltage function that is a solution of our voltage wave equation and this is a correct solution as we seen in our last video lecture so here we first convert it into frequency domain for for that we consider a sinusoidal voltage that is denoted by v suffix f z comma t for this we consider a frequency that is omega upon 2 pi as we know that omega equals to 2 pi f and from here we get a frequency in terms of angular frequency that is omega upon 2 pi now we consider a function f1 and f2 as a sinusoidal function and for this we consider a cosine function because cosine function is choose by convention it is easier to use a cosine function as compared to sine function so here we consider function f1 and f2 as a sinusoidal function and it is of the form v not cos within bracket omega t plus phi phi is a phase difference so after taking a f1 and f2 as a sinusoidal function the expected solution get converted into a sinusoidal solution that is v suffix s z comma t and this is equals to mod v not cos within bracket omega t plus minus z upon u suffix p plus phi here u suffix p is called a phase velocity in case of sinusoidal wave and positive sign is for backward propagation and negative sign for forward propagation so here we take care that we open the bracket within a square bracket that is omega t plus minus omega upon u suffix p into z here omega upon u suffix p is called phase constant that is noted by beta so beta is called a phase constant and its value is omega upon u suffix p where u suffix p is called a phase velocity so the expected solution for sinusoidal function is given as v suffix s z comma t equals to mod v not cos within bracket omega t plus minus beta z plus phi here beta is called a phase constant and its value is omega upon u suffix p now we consider a case 
for any moment we choose a phase difference that is phi equals to 0. When phi equals to 0, the expected solution of the sinusoidal function that is a voltage function which having a forward and backward propagation is written as V suffix S F Z comma T that is for forward Z propagation and its value is mod V naught cos omega T minus V Z because in forward Z propagation we take a minus sign. Similarly, we get a each function for backward Z propagation and its value is suffix S B Z comma T and its value is mod V naught cos omega T plus beta Z. Here the sign is positive plus plus for backward propagation and minus for forward propagation. Here we consider that the electromagnetic wave that is the sinusoidal one is propagated towards positive direction of Z that is toward unit vector Z direction. Here we note a point that the mod V naught mod V naught is a magnitude factor of the voltage function and its value can be obtained by putting z equals to 0 and t equals to 0. So, we get for any value of V s, we get magnitude factor by putting z equals to 0 and t equals to 0 and these two values that is v, sub, v suffix s f and v suffix s b that is for forward and backward propagation is called a real instantaneous form of the transmission line voltage. Now from these two equations that is for forward and backward z propagation there is a term with cosine function which is omega t minus beta z for forward z propagation and omega t plus beta z for backward z propagation. Here within the bracket there are two values that is omega t and beta z. Omega t or beta z are the units of angles in radians. So the unit of omega t is radians also the unit of beta z is also radian. So from here we get the unit of omega. The unit of omega is radian per second because we know that the unit of omega t is radian. So we take t to the right side and we get a unit that is radian per second. Similarly, the unit of beta z is also radians and we move z to the right side. Here z is called a displacement. So the unit of beta that is a phase constant is radian per meter because z is a displacement and its unit is meter. So from here we conclude that omega is called a radian time frequency and this is called a phase shift per unit time. And beta has a unit that is called radian per meter and it is called a spatial frequency, spatial related to the space that is in terms of displacement. So it is called a phase shift per unit distance. So, with a cosine function there is a term that is omega t plus minus beta z minus for forward z propagation and plus for backward z propagation. Now, we consider a real instantaneous form for forward z propagation that is v suffix s f z comma t. Now, in this we put time t equals to 0. After putting time t equals to 0, we get mod v naught cos minus beta into z. Here cos minus beta into z get converted into cos beta into z. This is a property of a cos function and this value that is mod v naught cos beta z is a simple periodic function and it repeats after every incremental distance lambda. Here lambda is called a wavelength that varies periodically as the propagation of wave. So from here as you know that the beta is a phase constant and its value is omega upon u suffix p and the value of omega is 2 pi f. From here we get a ratio that is 2 pi upon beta and it is equals to u suffix p upon f. And this value that is the ratio of phase velocity upon frequency is called a wavelength lambda.
So this is a frequency domain analysis of the sinusoidal wave on transmission line. And here we consider a lossless propagation of sinusoidal voltage. And here we find that there is a phase constant and its value is omega upon u suffix p, where u suffix p is called a phase velocity. Here minus sign is for forward z propagation and positive sign for negative z propagation. And here we derive a real instantaneous form of the transmission line voltage. After that we consider a units that is omega which has radian per second and beta that have radian per meter. So this is about a frequency domain performance of a lossless propagation on a transmission line. The next topic is complex analysis of sinusoidal wave. We represent a sinusoidal electromagnetic wave in a complex form. For this we use a complex exponent that is e to power plus minus jx. That is by using Euler identity we get a complex exponent and its value is cos x plus minus j sin x. Here cos x is the real part and sin x is the imaginary part. And as we know that the real part which is cos x can be written as in terms of exponent which is e to power jx plus e to power minus jx upon 2. And after opening the bracket we get 1 upon 2 e to power jx plus 1 upon 2 e to power minus jx. Here the second term is called a complex conjugate of the first term because we know that to obtain the complex conjugate we put j equals to minus j. So in case of cos x there is a first term and the second term is the complex conjugate of the first term. Similarly the imaginary part that is a sin x can be written in exponential form that is e to power jx minus e to power minus jx upon 2j. After opening the bracket we get the first term that is 1 upon 2j e to power jx and we get a second term that is plus minus 1 upon 2j e to power minus jx. So the second term is a complex conjugate of the first term. So we simply return the sec second term as a complex conjugate that is cc. And in we know that the imaginary that is j, j is equals to under root 1 that is j square equals to minus 1. And we know that the real instantaneous form of a transmission line can be written as v suffix s z comma t equals to mod v naught cos within bracket omega t plus minus z upon u p plus phi. Here plus sign is for backward propagation and minus sign for forward propagation. Here z is the displacement and u suffix p is called a phase velocity. After opening the bracket we get omega t plus minus omega upon u suffix p into z plus phi. Here the ratio omega upon u suffix p is called beta that is a phase constant. So from here that is the instantaneous part of the transmission line that is mod v naught cos within bracket omega t plus minus beta z plus phi. Now in this there is a cos term and we represent it in complex form. So the cos omega t plus minus beta z plus phi can be written in exponential form which has the first term and second term. The second term is the complex conjugate of the first term that is a exponential form is 2 e to power omega t plus minus beta z plus phi. So we break the exponential term and we get e to power g phi into e to power plus minus g beta z into e to power j omega t. And the second is a complex conjugate that is written as cc. Now from here we get a value that is mod v naught e to power j phi and this is called a complex amplitude. It is written as v suffix naught. So the complex amplitude is v naught that is equals to mod v naught e to power j phi. This complex amplitude is used for voltage or current amplitudes and this is generally a complex value which having a magnitude and phase that is magnitude is v naught and phase is phi. Now 
here we represent a complex instantaneous voltage to get a complex instantaneous voltage of the above equation we take a value other than constant and complex conjugate that is v not e to power plus minus g beta z e to power j omega t here to get a complex instantaneous voltage we neglect complex conjugate term and 1 upon 2 so here we get a complex instantaneous voltage which is written as v suffix c z comma t now to get a phasor voltage that is to get a instantaneous phasor voltage in complex form we have to drop the factor which is e to power j omega t here e to power j omega t is a time factor if we neglect this we get a phasor voltage in complex form so for dropping the e to power j omega t we put t equals to 0 so the value becomes e to power 0 that is equals to 1 this means that the complex instantaneous voltage is stand still that is td at by putting t equals to 0 for this we get a phasor voltage which is written as v suffix p z equals to v naught e to power plus minus g beta z because in this the phase voltage depend upon one variable only that is displacement z here we put t equals to 0 so this phasor voltage defined for sinusoidal voltage steady state condition that is v naught is independent of time 